Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. It's the morning after the night before. Mr. Gareth A. Davis, uh, bright and early. But what a fight last night, mate. It is the morning after the night before, and I can re- I'm really feeling it. I'm not sure what day it is. can't believe it's Monday, to be honest. Um, but it is that weird bank holiday thing on the Easter bank holiday where everyone's rushing home on the Thursday because it's all uh, kind of closing down. And we've, we've, we've had a long week at this. It felt like it came late, this event, um, but it didn't disappoint. Um, it, the whole event was really good, actually. I mean, even from going to Marnie Swindell's gym last Wednesday, I think it was, to the events um, around the O2 and um, going into London around it all, the, the way people carried themselves all week. Um, I think it's one of Ben Shalom and Boxer's most successful events, in my view. Um, great crowd in last night. We had the Albanians... We had the Ipswich supporters, the Fabio Wardley's fans, a lot of people supporting Fraser Clark there as well, by the way. Um, Ben Whitaker, um, Callum Simpson gets more and more impressive for me. Um, Congo was great last night. I mean, we'll pick the bones out of this in a minute, but, um, you know, all, all the boxers did their thing last night. The actual boxers emerged, um, what, what we class as people who were going to be use their boxing skills rather than their fighting or brawling skills last night were the winners. It was a, it was a terrific night. When, when the O2 is on song, it's one of the great venues in the world. And I mean, it, it, because of what happened at the top of the card, Joe, um, it reminded me of those nights with um, Dillian White and Joseph Parker and Dillian White and Derek Chisora or, or Derek Chisora and Carlos Takam. You, you know, the, it had that feel about it last night. Um, Big Mo was booming last night. He was on top form. Um, everyone, everyone, I think because it was a Sunday night and it was Easter Sunday and um, in the end, the event couldn't come quickly enough. Um, It was very special. And and as was the last um, fight of the night, and I I saw both men in the after parties afterwards and thankfully they seemed recovered, but they, they had something taken out of them last night. They did it. And, you know, it's not often you say when we got to the 12th round, um, the two men didn't have enough left in them to finish each other, even though either man could have finished the other in, in, in those last three minutes, but they just didn't have en- enough left, either of them. And that's when people have left it all in the ring. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the main event first of all then. Is it too early to call it a British classic? Because that, that, that was excellent, wasn't it? No, it's one of the best British heavyweight title fights of all time. There's no question about it. It belongs in the pantheon. Um, Both men's stock rose. I mean, I I went to tell them both afterwards because when Fraser walked into the um, bar, the, the, the big bar upstairs, the Swish Bar, at the Intercontinental Hotel next to the O2, there was a huge round of applause in there. Um, I went to speak to him about 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, and I said, how do you feel? Do you feel like your stock's risen? He said, oh, I don't know. I said, Fraser, when you walked in here, did you not see the whole room go up? And I said, wherever you walk now, be it in Derby, be it in London, wherever you go, that is the reception you're going to get. Because people appreciate when our fighters give that much. Um, Same for Fabio Wardley. His face broken, seeping claret from rounds two or three, um, seemingly impervious to that, staggering on his feet at times, still fighting in flurries when he looked like he had no energy and life force left in him. 
a great knockdown, great attacks on Fraser, both men with extraordinary chins. I mean, how can you not say both men's stock hasn't risen? It, 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 they've both got great chins, incredible hearts. Fraser proved any doubts about him are unfounded. Um, they both hurt each other. Um, and the respect levels from those videos afterwards of them in the change room is extraordinary. And yet, Mr. Pugh, they're going to roll it back and do it all over again. Well, I hope they do. I hope they do. We will come on to that in a minute. But when you are ringside, Gareth, after the final bell goes, everyone's usually kind of chatting who they think's got it, who they think's got it. I've never been around a ring where no one knew. It was so hard to score with the knockdowns, with the point deducted. Do you think the draw was the right decision in the end? I'm going to get my notes here. Well, I had, I, I, I mean, full disclosure, I scored it. I remember I'm doing commentary. Yep. Um, and and uh, watching the fight. I did make notes. I've, I've put them over. Let me just, let me just get my notes. Um, hey, I um I thought Fabio Wardley won it. I had no argument with the draw. Um, the only thing I disagreed with, really, I think, was the one fifteen one twelve score. That seemed a little, which which you know makes sense, and a lot of people have felt that as well because you know Fraser had a point deducted for a low blow, and he was down once. So, was that right? The point deducted was that a right decision by the referee? It, was it Howard Foster? Uh, uh, no, Steve, Steve Gray. Gray. Yeah, Steve, Steve Gray. Gray. It was a Steve Gray. Yeah. Howard Foster was a judge. Yeah. yeah. Um, then I didn't see an early warning, but apparently he was warned earlier. Um, it was a sneaky little. <laughs> When you watch the replay, it was a sneaky little punch to the to the to the cup. Um, well, it's just what the referee thought at the time. I mean, he was doing his job. Um, he he refed it brilliantly. He he refed it so brilliantly we couldn't remember if it was Howard Foster or Steve Gray just yeah. then. By the way, so in my views, it, it was good refereeing. Um, yeah, I mean that that's the only thing I just don't understand that scorecard. 113, 113, I get. 114, 113 for um that was Mike Alexander, that for Fabio Wardley, I get. I, I had Wardley just nicking it. I say nicking it. I mean, for the last four rounds, either man could have won that fight, you know, but um I just because the if you do the two point deduction and take it to 117, 112. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I didn't, I thought Clark was very good early on. Um, I, I thought he won the first three or four, uh, but then obviously got dropped in the fifth. So, um, look, this is boxing. It was a close fight. It's what you liked. Um, Fabio fought in flurries, which I think he does really well now. And as he educates himself, um, he, he will do that better and better. We saw the class boxing skills and boxing class of Fraser Clark. Um, there, there have to be no question marks about him now. Not that I didn't really have them, but um, he needed a performance like that to, to prove what and who he is. Um, and as you say, it's one of those events that, one of those fights that will live so long in the memory. Um, because it because you, you're hoarse and exhausted yourself at the end of it, aren't you? They, they they take you on a journey, you know, in a fight like that. Um, but also I think um Ben Ben Shalom I interviewed afterwards, and you'll you'll know this as well, because I'm sure he said it in the post-fight press. So he he thought Fraser won clearly. Uh Ben Davison thought his guy won, because I interviewed both of them afterwards, straight away afterwards for the broadcast. Um, but a lot of people are not going to mind them getting in the ring together again. So no one's going to argue with the 
with the draw, you know. Yeah, and that rematch, speaking to Fabio after, he said, look, I've got options. That rematch is going to be massive. But he has defended the British title twice now. He's been British champion for well over a year. And it was always, this was his last fight before moving up to kind of the world title contenders, the top tens. So if you're Fabio, do you, do you want that rematch or do you want to go and pursue kind of world title rankings and those sort of belts? Well, I think they could sell out Portman Road now. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not sure what the capacity is. Is it 35,000 or something? I think um, it's 30, around 30. It's, it, it's still a big event. Yeah. Um, um, you know, he has ambitions. I, I thought he just pipped it anyway. Um, that fight is going to be there with Fraser Clark down the line. It doesn't need to be immediate. Um, it could be... You know, it could be that both guy, both of these guys now belong um, in that Saudi Arabian Super League mix. You know, maybe that's the in for Ben Shalom with these fighters. Um, I think if Fabio wants to do that, he should. Um, there's there's big fights. As we know, he's fought in Saudi Arabia already, hasn't he? The, the David Adelaide fight was there. Um you know, there's there's vulnerabilities in him in his boxing style. Um, like, for example, if you put him in with a Frank Sanchez, he might struggle with that. If you put him in with a, um, I certainly think you could put him in. I, I know, of course, he'll never fight Dillian White because Dillian White was carrying his flag, and he, and um, I think he's managed by Dillian, isn't he, or Dillian and his team? Yeah, Dillian and his team. Um, but I think Fabio Wardley and Dillian White would be an amazing fight, you know. In fact, he reminds me of Dillian at times when he fights, when he's kind of let his hands go and then he's just wading back in like Dillian does at his very best, where he's just, again, another guy, Dillian, brilliantly leaves it all in there. I've got great memories of Dillian's fights, the Povetkin fights, the, the, the Chisora and Parker fights, where you're just on the edge of your seat. And that's what Fabio brings. Um, he's a real warrior. I met his mum last night as well, by the way. What a fantastic woman she is. Um, Shoni, I think her name is. Um, and I had a great chat with her. It's always wonderful. And, and a good chat to Ben Whitaker's dad last night, Tony. It's always wonderful to speak to the parents of our guys, you know. Um, you know, because they are their DNA. They are, you know, and, and it's, it, as you know, it's always fascinating, isn't it? The access we get in our sport, both before, during, and after in many ways, it is quite extraordinary. And I want to, I just want to shout out to the way the fans were last night as well. Um, it was, it was great fun. It was just three or four cruiserweights got a little bit, a little bit touchy last night. I was stuck in the middle of that. Did you see that? There was a little bit of argy bargy. Yeah, let's go straight into that then, because obviously Vidal Riley outpointed Mikhail Lowell. Isaac Chamberlain gets on the mic at Sky Sports, and then Chev Clark kind of wades in. He is mandatory for the British title. Um, so, yeah, what did actually happen there? Because Sky cut the stream. I spoke to Chev after. He kind of protested his innocence uh, straight away in all of that. So if you had that kind of view from that side of the ring, I was the other side of the ring. From your no, I was point, right next happened? to Chev. I was right next to Chev. Okay, so yeah, I, what happened? I was, I was getting ushered away from it. No, because I was about to... I was there witnessing Vidal Riley saying to Isaac Chamberlain, what are you doing in your blue tinted glasses? I was thinking, all right, nothing wrong with blue tinted glasses. <laughs> Um, and they were having that contretemps. And, and if you'd spoken to Isaac in the week, Isaac came to Bronx uh, Boxing Gym, didn't, yep. didn't he? He was kind of um, saying, I'm definitely going to be there. And, you know, it's good. They're doing the mix very well. And um, Isaac did his thing, busted over to the corner. They had the back and forth. Vidal wasn't letting him steal his moment in the, in the sun. Very, very fine boxing performance against Mikel Lowell. I had a few disagreements with our own commentary team. I thought Vidal was winning it so simply, he didn't really need to change a lot. It was a very fine performance. You could even call it a shutout against Mikel Lowell. Um, 
you know, with Vidal, skills pay the bills. Um, and uh, it, yeah, it was very good. Again, Isaac Chamberlain is going to test him in a completely different way. It's a really good fight. So I was waiting to interview um, Vidal. Um, and suddenly there was this commotion behind me. We were all getting bumped. And it was Chev um, trying to get in there to have his say. Um, and he said the same. And, and then so there was just a bit of argy bargy. It wasn't, no punches were thrown, by the way. There's just a lot of pushing and shoving. Secure, and I got ushered out of the way very quickly. And, you know, probably 10 security guys came and calmed it down. But it it was Chev trying to get his say on there on the mic as well. I mean, I spoke to him and Isaac um, afterwards as well. And um, yes, Chev was doing exactly that, proclaiming his innocence, but saying that um, this always happens when I come around, you know? Um, and, you know, he, he, he's bringing the heat, isn't he? They're all going to fight each other. It's fantastic. And, you know, it, even Robert Smith waded in kind of trying to calm them all down. So, um, no, it, was, it wasn't an ugly scene. It might have been. Um, but it was literally bodies bumping a little bit. Um, but uh, it was a bit of fun. It was a bit of fun. You know? He certainly was. And hopefully we get multiple fights within those kind of trio very soon. Um, let's talk about Ben Whitaker. Leon Willings, I think, was the first opponent that actually kind of posed some kind of challenges towards Ben. But Ben done what he does. And kind of showboated skills, whatever you call it, his way to another dominant victory. Yeah, what did you make of it? Yeah, he didn't show the boat so much this time, yeah. did he? Um, certainly didn't in the first two rounds. He was he was intent on beating Willings up. I'd spoken to Willings and his team in the week at the uh, press conference. I, well, you probably had as well, but mm. I had a I had a nice chat with his team. Um, I really liked Leon. His team were chatting to me, not him necessarily. He was very quiet. But you look at him physically, he's a very strong human being. And I thought that just before the first bell, and I thought that last week when I met him. And also the team around him were kind of saying, Leon, Leon's really prepared to do something here. And what Leon did, he did his own thing. He ignored Ben Whitaker's um, um, kind of star, rising star. Um, and what he did was he says he said, I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to move off the ropes, do the shoulder roll. Um, and what he found, even though he went down early, was after a couple of rounds, he wasn't actually that hurt by Ben Whitaker's punches. So he got into his own rhythm in lots of ways. And he, I say he got better as the fight got on. He did. I mean, he was roundly beaten. I had him losing every round. Um, well, maybe, apart from one, maybe, um, where he did have a bit of success. But because of Ben's style and because he comes in to claim the whole arena as his own and, you know, with diversity and the dancing and all of that, you kind of want to see him get hit. And I don't mean that in a resentful way that's part of the carnival isn't it yeah. you, you almost want to see the guy that's doing this get the clung. jeopardy the je exactly and, and the hubris that he brings you know is there going to be a fall tonight for him you know is the arrogance and he's not an arrogant man but is the arrogance of his dance going to be tested properly tonight so leon did that a little bit um and and we we all we all I had a bit of love for Leon Willings, you know, the willing Willings. I mean, he will never forget that night because his stock rose as a result. Um, and um, yeah, I thought I, you, you hadn't, you, you, when you're watching sport and, and the big underdog starts to rise a little, you know, like when, in some of those FA third round FA Cup ties or Japan beating, when Japan beat South Africa in the rugby or you, 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 if the underdog starts to emerge, you kind of, there's a part of your human nature that goes with them. And, and in the end, you're thinking, could Leon just catch Ben here and maybe get him to stumble and go down? Or And, and the whole crowd would have gone ape, wouldn't they? They really would have gone ape. So 
he did well last night. I think that I think some people will question that maybe the power of Ben Whitaker. Um, I thought he looked phenomenal in the first couple of minutes. Um, the way he, he set about Willings, he is a talent. He's an extraordinary talent. Um, he started giving it back a little bit this week to people that are critical of him. That's fair enough. Um, but I always say this: if you're going to be critical of people, just do it. Just do it. It's the way you do it, not mm. not not some um, what you do. It's, it's and I spoke to Tony, his father, about him last night. Ben Whitaker's not got his man strength yet, Joe. Um, you know, as you can tell, I'm full of the event from last night. Yeah. Still, I, 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 it's, it's one of those, isn't it? Do you feel like that? Yeah, and we haven't seen. Apart from like the AJ nights, it's rare we see a packed out O2 now, which I think it, it kind of took us back five, ten years ago when AJ was coming through. Dillian White's having those nights against Oscar Rivas, against Joe Parker. It was just a good night, a really good night for British boxing. I'm sure. Yeah, we've we've had it with um no, but we have had it with Parker and, and White. Yep. And we have had it with with um Chisora and, and White. Yep. But, but I know what you mean. It was. It did have that feel about it, you know. Um, it was. Uh, no, it, it did. It did feel an amazing night last night, and and you could tell how many were there because when you tried to get out of there in the end, it was one of those events where you might as well leave it till one in the morning to leave because it's gridlock, you know. Um, so you know yeah, it was. It was. And listen. As I said earlier, I think the Albanian crowd brings something as well. You know, when it all went um, red and the flags came out and the, the the Black Eagle, I think it is, it was fantastic. Yeah, just uh, last thing I want to ask you about, because it was a great night at the O2, Gareth. Uh, we started off the week talking about Dalton Smith versus Adam Azim. And now after last night, we're going to be talking about Adam Azim versus... Harlem Eubank. Uh, it, was, it was a great little face-off. It was quite interesting that the fight hasn't actually been signed. It weren't an announcement. It was no. just to kind of say that they're in advanced talks. Yeah, but what did you make of that fight? Harlem Eubank versus Adam Azim. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, I think I'm happier in some ways for Harlem to be... Um, he's a natural light welter, isn't he? So... Um, I'd, I'm happy with him fighting at like Welter rather than Welter because he's not the biggest guy. Tried to speak, went over to speak to Chris Eubank Senior and Harlem, but um, as Chris reminded me, he, he, he what he did was he, he he flattered, and then you know you're always well turned out, lovely to see you. But then he said, but the key today is silence. So he wouldn't do any words with me because I I don't think he did any interviews. Did no, he? he didn't. I don't um, think he even um, did. Um, no, but but I, I like it, and I'm glad that Adam was in. I spoke to Adam about this, and Dalton was there last night as well, of course. With Florian, yeah, with yeah. Florian Marku. Um, which uh, can I just say, I was quite surprised that they thought Florian had that fight. The corner thought they he had that fight. Um, I thought Congo was a clear winner, by the way. Career best performance as well, I think, from Congo. Oh, I saw Congo after Joe. Yeah. Terrific fight. Went through a lot in that. And Howard Foster did him a favour during that fight. This is one of the points I, I think is important. Howard Foster did him a favour early in the fight and said no holding, yeah? And once he said no holding, he he boxed brilliantly and he held Marco off and he fatigued him and he frustrated him uh, during it. As I said, the boxers won last night. Um, yeah, I like it, Harlem Ben um, Adam Azim. And I like Chris Eubank Sr. involved. I always like him mm. involved. He always brings a, a class and a panache and uh, and a promotional value to, to events. He'll do good things with Harlem. If Harlem can produce um, the kind of ring craft and command of the, of the square circle, like he did in his last performance in Brighton, um, even though he's going to get swarmed by Adam Azim, I, I see Azim as a favourite. Um, if 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 Harlem can control matters in the ring, um, it's going to be a very very fine fight. 
It certainly will be. Um, Gareth, there isn't any boxing this week. There isn't any boxing in the UK anyway. Uh, There'll so be plenty going on. Great. There's, there's plenty going on. So hopefully we'll catch up if uh, any big stories break. But uh, it's been good seeing you this week, mate. You too. Listen, famous last words. There's no boxing this week. You never... As soon as you say that, we will have the busiest week of our lives. Watch. Well, there you go. There you go. And I'll uh, catch up with you very soon, Gareth. And thank you very much for being to IFL TV. Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.